New York City's under attack. It's up to you and your fellow S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to try and defend New York City from an onslaught of nefarious villains. That would be easy, except there's secretly Hydra agents sabotaging your missions. Hi, I'm Nick Metzler. I'm the game designer for Hail Hydra, and I work for Spin Master in association and partnership with Cardinal and Marvel Games. This is the full game rules video. If you haven't first played the first game rules, please stop this video, go back and watch that. It's best explained through that, and I don't want to confuse you with any you know, little rules here and there. If you've played the first game rules and are looking only for the changes to the game, go ahead and go to the full game rules in the box. In those rules, there's a little call-out box that tells you exactly what has changed and where. It's a little red skull symbol. Thirteen health discs. Three defense discs. 18 villain cards, one first player token, one metal Avengers tower mover, 80 attack cards, 40 blue and 40 red, eight loyalty discs, five shield and three hydra, 14 hero cards, one oversized New York City card. First game rules and full game rules instruction sheets. The setup for Hail Hydra is pretty simple. You're gonna take the 80 attack cards, you're gonna shuffle them, you're gonna place them face down on the draw pile on top of the New York City card. If your team ever runs out of attack cards completely, and there's no more in the draw pile, go ahead and reshuffle all the cards in the discard pile to make the new draw pile. Next, you're gonna set up the villain deck. Each game will feature five villains and it will culminate in the Red Skull. You're gonna place this card on the bottom. Next, you're gonna take one of these five level three villains denoted by the three skulls on the back here. You're gonna randomly and secretly choose one you're gonna place it face down. Secretly just means that you're not gonna look at it either. Next, you're gonna take two of these level two villains. You're gonna place two of them randomly and secretly face down on top of the pile. And then finally, you're going to take one of the four level one villains and you're gonna place it face down on top. This creates the villain stack and you're gonna to have to defeat this if you want shield to win. Next, place the Avengers tower mover on the number 27. It's going to be on 27 for the full game, no matter what. You're going to want to count the number of people playing. The number of people playing will determine how many Hydra agents are in the mix. Refer to the chart in the full game rules instruction sheet. For our example, we're going to use six players. In that case, there's going to be two Hydra agents. Place those flip down and place four shield loyalty discs after showing them to the, to the entire group into the mix here. Put the other two back in the box. Give these a good shuffle. Pass one out to each player. Each player will then look at the loyalty discs secretly so that nobody else knows what they are. The amount of Hydra agents in the game is public knowledge, and the Hydra agents will know who each other are. To make sure that this happens, everybody is going to close their eyes. The person with the most clear speaking voice will announce, Hydra agents, please open your eyes and identify each other. Hydra agents, please close your eyes. Everybody, please open your eyes. It's pretty basic, it's pretty easy to remember. After that point, the last person to have read a Marvel comic will be receiving the first player token. Decide who that is, give them the first player token. Next, you're gonna be passing out attack cards. Normally, you're gonna have around six. But to begin the game, the person to the left of the first player token is only gonna take two. That's because in the first offensive, they're going to be given the first player token. When you're given the first player token, you're gonna to be discarding everything you have left in your hand and drawing an entire new set of six. The reason you're not getting six initially is because if you get a bunch of blue cards in your shield, we don't want anybody dumping a bunch of blue cards immediately. The next person after that will get four, and anybody else still playing is gonna get six. So six, 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 and six. Excellent, now you're gonna choose your heroes. Each hero has a special ability located down here. You're able to use this special ability one time per game and it's extremely powerful. It'll help you win the day for shield or bury the team as Hydra. The cool thing about it is on the back here, if you are shield, there's suggested strategies on when to use your power. And if you're Hydra, also suggested strategies of when to use your power. On the front right here, it tells you exactly when you're supposed to use this power, like what time you're allowed to. You're not allowed to use your hero ability if you've been knocked out of the mission or if you've revealed yourself as Hydra. So everybody can choose their hero 
they can choose whichever one they like the best. The powers are relatively balanced, so you don't actually have to read all of them. I would recommend just choosing one, seeing how it plays. Instructions for every single hero are gonna be in separate videos, and you can look at them in isolation if you'd like. In this game, you're gonna be facing a vicious lineup of dangerous villains. There's 17 different villains in the box, and they're all unique in some way. And I'm gonna flip over two just to describe it. They're all gonna have a certain number of health. That's the amount of health tokens that you're gonna give them when they get flipped over. This is the amount of damage that they're gonna do every single offensive if they're left alive. They're gonna do it directly to the city. So if they damage the city, you're gonna decrease it by that amount. They're also going to do this special attack. Every single one of them is unique, and they're gonna do it every single time that they attack the city. In addition, there's two symbols that you might wanna look out for. This is a defense symbol, and this is a quick attack symbol. If they have a symbol, I recommend reading their special power before beginning the fight against the villain because it'll affect the team in some way. If it's got a defense symbol, they're going to have defense tokens. It's basically similar to additional health, but it's more like perma health. It's gonna be there forever. And you're gonna have to get through that defense every single turn. So if this guy's got five health and he's got one defense, if you do five damage, normally you'd be able to kill him. But because he's got a defense, he's got one health remaining. This symbol means quick attack. If a villain has a quick attack, it means his special power is going to affect our offensive in some way, shape, or form. So you're gonna to wanna to read that and perform the attack pretty much immediately. In addition, every single villain has their own video as well, explaining strategies on how to beat them as well as stuff that they're gonna to do to you. I recommend watching those if you're confused about a specific villain. In the first game rules, when you totaled the amount in the attack cards and you added them up, it was either gonna be positive or negative. And if it was positive, you did damage to the villain that amount. It's exactly the same in the, in the full game rules as well, except there's an additional bit. If you go below negative 10, you're gonna immediately damage the city one damage. So you wanna stay above that negative 10 number, but it's not totally awful if you go below it. It's just, try not to. This game is played out in offensives and missions. The way you can think of offensives is kind of like a round in the game. But on the first offensive in the game, you're not gonna perform the first step, so you're gonna skip it. We'll talk about it in just a sec. The second step is that every single hero is going to lay down one, two, or three attack cards face down on top of their hero card. As soon as every single hero has done so, the person with the first player token is going to collect all of the attack cards from every single hero, shuffle them up face down so that no one knows who played what, and reveal them all at the same time. Once you've flipped over all the cards and added them up, you're gonna get a, a total sum. It's either gonna be positive or negative. In this case, it's positive, and it's gonna be positive five. You're gonna do five damage as a result to the villain. Now, this villain typically has five health, represented by the, the five health discs here, but he's also got a defense. He's got one defense here, which means that this five damage does a total of four damage to this guy because of the, the one defense. So he'd have one health left, and since Whiplash is still alive, Whiplash is then going to attack the city, whatever his amount here is. So he's gonna do three damage to the city, one, two, three, and he's also gonna do a special effect. Every single villain has a specific special effect that they're gonna do every single time that they attack the city. Uh, his special effect is that his defense increases by one. So you're gonna add one defense disc. So this guy's still alive. Because of that, the first player token is then going to pass, and this is the first step that we skipped again. So this is always gonna happen every offensive, just not the first offensive. So they're gonna pass the first player token. The player with the first player token is going to discard all their attack cards face down into the discard pile. So they're gonna discard theirs face down, and they're gonna draw six new attack cards. This is the only time you're gonna get a complete refresh of new attack cards. Everybody else is gonna get one new attack card. So there's a bit of an incentive not to throw all of your team's cards all at the same time because you're only gonna get one new one per turn and it's gonna take a couple turns, offensives, for this thing to get all the way around. So if you haven't defeated the villain, you're gonna continue playing offensives until you do. But wait, before you continue playing offensives, there's one thing I forgot to mention. Communication rules. When you're playing attack cards face down, and even when attack cards are flipped up, you are never allowed to be specific about what you played. 
So this is a plus three right here. I'm not allowed to say that this is a plus three. I can only say this is good or this is bad. I can't say this is super good. I can't say this is very good. I can't say this is the best blue card in the game. Well, it's not, but you still can't say that. You can only say this is good or this is bad. And I'm very serious about that. Like, don't ever, 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 ever say anything except this is good or this is bad. I mean, I guess you could say nothing too. That's totally fine. There is one other thing to note. When you're playing multiple cards, you must be specific about how many you play. So you could say, I'm playing one good and one bad, or I'm playing two goods. That's totally fine. Everybody's able to know how many you're playing. At various times during the game, you may be forced to play a card that's not with your team. This is okay, it's part of the game. And it's probably because you threw a lot of your team's cards early, and now you're, you're struggling because you're only getting one card per turn, so you don't have any more of your team's cards. This deck has got 80 cards. There's 40 blue cards, 40 red cards. But the red card numbers are actually a little bit higher. They go from negative two to negative five. The blue cards are plus one to plus four. Because there's more shield members in the game, they have a bit of an advantage from the amount of cards being put in. The Hydra members have a bit of an advantage with the numerals. The knockout phase, Oof, it's my favorite portion of the game. This portion is a voting portion of the game where you informally discuss who you believe to be Hydra and then you get to knock them out of the next mission. It's dangerous though because if you knock out a shield agent, now there's only three shield agents and two Hydra agents. That gives Hydra a better opportunity to take you guys out and take out the, the, the city too. But if you knock out a Hydra agent, theoretically there's gonna be less red cards in the mix and you'll know you've taken out a Hydra agent. There's no 100% way to really prove anybody is anything, so it's important to watch how many cards people are playing. It's a good way to deduce who might be throwing cards. To begin the knockout phase, you're gonna take out a phone and set a timer for two minutes. After the two minutes are up, every single player is going to put a finger up in the air like this and count down three, two, one. And everybody's going to point at somebody after the two minutes are up. The person that has the majority of fingers pointed at them is knocked out for the entire next mission. If there's no majority, and say for example there might be a tie, no one is voted out and the entire team moves forward into the next mission. Now, you are allowed to throw away your vote. You're allowed to abstain just by keeping your fingers straight up in the air. This basically means that you're not gonna be incriminating anybody, but it also might mean that you're losing an opportunity to knock somebody out and gain more information. If the majority of people are still pointing up at the end, no one is knocked out and the team keeps moving on to the next mission. Now, if you've been knocked out, don't fret. You're not out forever. You're gonna be coming back after the next mission is over. A, you know, when the villain is defeated. But, you will still get the first player token like normal. So if we pass this to you, you're still gonna get it. You're gonna discard cards like normal, you're still gonna draw like normal. But you're not gonna be playing any cards face down on your hero card to attack the villain. Instead, before anybody plays, you're going to hand one or two attack cards face down to any single hero that is on the mission. The reason you're doing this is if you're shield, you can try to pick out who you think might be shield and give good cards to them. Or if you're Hydra, you can feed bad cards to Hydra members so that they can play it on their own. Now that you've completed this knockout phase, you're gonna take on the next mission. Remember, a mission begins when you flip over this card, so go ahead, flip over it now. Give this villain the appropriate amount of health discs, and you're ready to start the next mission. Each time a villain is defeated, your team is going to immediately move into a knockout phase, and the amount of voting parts in this knockout phase is gonna be dependent on what level the villain is. If you're gonna be moving into a level two villain, you're going to have one knockout phase. If you're gonna be moving into a level three villain, you're gonna have two knockout phases. And if you're gonna be facing the final villain, Red Skull, if you have five or six members in the group, you're going to have two knockout phases. And if you have seven or eight members in the game, you're going to have three knockout phases. Basically, when you're facing off against Red Skull, you're gonna have as many opportunities to knock out as there are Hydra agents in the game. If you're a Hydra agent, at any point in time during a mission, you're allowed to flip your loyalty disc over and announce, Hail Hydra! 
As soon as you do that, your rules change. If you're on the mission, when you reveal yourself as Hydra, you can immediately damage the city three. If you've been knocked out of the mission, you may only damage the city one. So theoretically, you wanna be on the mission when you're hailing Hydra. If you're getting sandbagged and constantly getting voted out, that's when you might wanna reveal yourself if you're not on the mission. Now, once you reveal yourself, you may no longer use your hero's special ability. So I recommend using it prior to revealing yourself. In addition, if you're on the mission, you're going to play your cards first, you're going to play your cards face up so that everybody knows what you're playing, and you're still gonna play one, two, or three attack cards like normal. If you've been knocked out of the mission, you are still going to give one or two cards away to anybody you want, but you have the option to steal a card randomly from a single player. So that allows you to target very specific uh, shield agents if you wish. In addition, if the villain attacks the city, you get to do an additional damage with the villain, actively destroying the city. So it's a big advantage to being out. And if you ever forget, all of these rules are on the back of your hero card. So if you're Hydra and you don't remember them, you can check out the back here. And if anybody accuses you, you can be like, oh, I was just checking out my suggested hero strategies. It's, I'm definitely not Hydra. Of course not, but really you are. Red Skull. He's the final villain in the game, and rightly so. He's unbelievably difficult to beat, and he is going to be the culmination of every single game of Hail Hydra. If New York City ever reaches zero on this card, Hydra wins, even if you have defeated Red Skull. He's got 13 health, and he also has a six damage every single turn, and he also has a quick attack and defense. The defense actually works into the quick attack. With his power all hail, any revealed Hydra agents are able to make a choice in the beginning of every single offensive. They could forego giving or stealing attack cards to give Red Skull a defense instead. So say for example, these two Hydra agents are giving uh, Red Skull two defense. They would each give him one instead of giving or stealing attack cards on this round, which effectively reduces his safe range for the Cosmic Cube penalty. Okay, so what, what is the Cosmic Cube penalty? The Cosmic Cube penalty states any additional damage five above Red Skull's remaining health will directly damage the city that amount. It's basically an overkill penalty. So this guy is particularly brutal. If you are Hydra, you might wanna give him a defense when the city life is pretty low. If city life is up near 17 or higher, which is rare, but it happens, I recommend still giving away one or two attack cards or stealing attack cards from unsuspecting shield agents to eat away at their potential blue cards that they could play on the Red Skull. There's some infrequent clarifications in the game. If you have any questions about minute details and things like that, there's actually a column in the back of the full game rules where you can go to look for all that. It's called infrequent clarifications and it probably has the answer to your question. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you have a blast playing Hail Hydra with your gaming group. Take care.